Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, bringing you back to the dream shop build, my dream shop build, our project that we've got going on here. Right now, we are in what's gonna be the office, and it will be basically lockbox here. As you guys have seen, we're doing the lockboxes, some storage areas up top. But these pieces of wood that we've got, what we're doing and with the process that we're currently in, if you've been keeping up, we put the, which I will show you in a second, but we put the, basically what are gonna be the floor supports, okay? And then we put plywood below that. And the plywood is going to be what will hold the concrete for the, sec for the second floor or the terrace floor or the suspended floor. And then these are what's gonna hold the weight of the concrete until the concrete sets, okay? So actually all of these will be removed and then the plywood will be removed as well. And I'll show you here in a second what will remain, but this is the bracing and support uh, and the, the boxing for concrete. As we box the columns, vertical columns and horizontal columns, we're boxing the floor of the second story. So here is the little area where we're gonna be using for inspecting and packing the goods, but also another storage lockbox in the back and then this area is also completely boxed up and ready for concrete but if you want to see what is above those pieces of plywood here you can take a look at the permanent metal framing that is going to be part of the roof the concrete gets poured the metal framing will be the the bottom part of the second story floor there will be, that's the bottom two inches. Then in the middle, there'll be a mesh or a netting of very thick mesh or a lattice work of rebar above that. And then there'll be two inches of concrete even above that. And that will be what's up there. And then all of that, the, the wood and the plywood will be removed and then moved to the next section. This is the, or what will be the photo video studio. So pretty cool. Um, very excited to be able to really step our game up, being able to produce much higher quality content with in the future with a designated area to do that. More lock boxes like we've got over here. The I do believe that we've finished this system here newly. I don't think this system was finished in the last video. This is kind of the locking system here. We've got this heavy support very thick concrete roof can put thousands and thousands of pounds of like metal and wood and stuff that we need to store up here up top extra storage and then inside is going to be the gear and tools and stuff like that or really whatever i want to store but these are basically rings for sliding metal doors and then these are very solid the doors will lock and then they'll fit, be fit into these rings so they won't be able to be removed it's a it's a safe system that works with a simple padlock of course, I'm fabricating myself everything, so it is a little bit interesting going, and we've got a lot of work to do, and it's taking a long time. Very, really been working 120, 130 hour minimum work weeks. Honestly, much more than that. I, I sleep four to six hours a night, and and I'm and getting done the rest of the, the day is just work. Luckily, I do have some people, but I want to mention really quickly before I show you this awesome, awesome work that we've done with the container. I want to say really quickly, if you guys are planning on doing a project like this yourself, it, it's great. It's a lot of freedom. It's really cool, but you're only as good as your team and it's very stressful and it's so much work trying to take people that may not have the same concepts as you may not have, unfortunately, the same abilities as you or the same vision or any of the above may not have the same passion as you and try to convert that into a team that wants to get the work done. Thank God I have a very good team who's open to my ideas and my designs and who's open to do things as I say, but it's still so much work to teach all these people. And I have to be, while I'm working here, I have to be going station to station and, and step by step, making sure that these people are doing the things that the way that I want them to do and then and to the quality standard. So I'm teaching people how to do all this stuff at the same time as trying to work myself 
And uh, I guess what I want to say is don't give, I gave myself a timeline with this and I really feel like that was kind of the biggest mistake. I didn't really have a, a lot of a choice in this case because it was either rent somewhere that was inadequate or build something that was what I needed because I was losing the place where I was currently at. So this is uh, by necessity, but I will say if you guys want to build your own thing or do your own thing, don't try not to have a timeline. Try and find a way that you can do it at a leisurely pace and it will go much better. The final thing that we've done that's really cool is we've added some posts. We're starting to fence in. You may be able to see that post there in the distance. So that's a corner post there. That's gonna be basically, this area will be the, where the, all those rocks are, will actually be a turnaround section. And for a, for a, a huge loop, and then there'll be like a double pass gate system where this is the exit. And then I'll show you the entrance down here where we've got the actual line of posts that looks a lot cooler. So these are the posts we're putting in. Actually, this property that I bought, I got a pretty good deal on the property because it was the person who owned the property before me had sold off all of the trees, basically. They, they made a deal with the local sawmills and the people came in and cut all the trees down and maybe not all the trees, but the huge majority of the trees, any of the good ones that would that would work good or for you know wood needs and all that kind of stuff. The, the best quality trees, they cut them all down. And so this is kind of a, it was dense jungle rainforest here, believe it or not, but, but uh, you know, it is unfortunate, but they did leave behind a lot of pieces that were knotty or had holes in them, you know, hollow in the center, or for whatever reason, they left behind a lot of pieces and parts of pine so we went through and collected in my truck all of those pieces of pine logs and everything and we have uh we use burnt motor oil to harden tomahawks okay bring them up to the temperature and then dip them into a what we use is recycled motor oil for that purpose because for 4140 it's one of the few steels that responds very well to just about any kind of old motor oil uh which is a cool thing about 4140 but we had a bunch, so we created a vat and we put all of the pieces of logs that we that we could find in the vat and I think two or three months with motor oil. And then that's what we got out of here is these is these cured. And that's why we basically did it. So they would last a lot longer with the burnt, burnt motor oil and diesel fuel, 50 50 mix of burnt motor oil and diesel fuel. If you come around this way, I want to show you one last thing before we close out. This top section here where you can see that the that the log is cut, there's been a few videos that I've posted here recently of me chopping with an ax. And a lot of people said that ax will never cut. All right, we cut so far with that ax that I made by hand. I, I forged an ax and it was a prototype to make sure that my that my process of forging the ax was going to be good enough to sell products. So first I forged an ax to use here and cut 55 trees into nine foot sections. Okay. So you can see that this is clearly cut with an ax. I used the ax that I made myself and you can see all of the trees that we've cut here with axes or with the ax. And then I made a few, two axes actually, that were the boarding axes, very high end, super attention to detail models. The one I made was a testing of the materials. I used the tamarind wood handle and the same uh, head without the tail spike because I didn't really need to, I knew that if I could do enough chopping with one side, the other side would be the same. So did that and then that was the prototype and then made two of the, the dissident boarding axes that are available for sale on the website, or at least right now, they'll probably be sold by the time I make this video, but I will make some more. Just wanted to let you guys know, there's been a video going around very popular of me chopping wood with an ax. And a lot of guys were commenting on there and saying that that ax would never work, but uh, that it was a splitting ax or anything like this, but it was, you know, actually my personal design of ax. And it was uh, about a 15 pound ax, I think more with the handle. So the swing is a little bit different when using a very heavy ax like that. But as you can see, it works great. You can see by the depth of these cuts that, uh, that it was quite effective ax and kind of wanted to close out with that here at a knife making shop cutting our own wood with an axe doesn't get a whole lot more cooler than that but if you think there's something else you want to see let me know if you want to 
if you think I'm doing it wrong, let me know. Or if you can't wait to see what the what we end up doing with, with these fence posts next, comment below. Thanks for watching. Bone out.